it's about, you know, close to, you know, three o'clock. I would have expected, you know, this to be jumping. And that's what the vision was. Um, there are some certain design elements that the Army um, actually took out of the plans that the community actually did. One is this, you know, this really ugly looking fence. The other one is more like the, the, uh, the center block wall that, that kind of, you know, makes it so that their center is now an island in our community where they are separated from our community. That is a water slide that is coming out of the building and going back in. It is a design that was done by the community. Residents really was like, can we have a water park in this building? And you know, the architects were crazy enough to, that they went ahead and designed it. And it got implemented. Um, but again, these are some of the things where the Army was really big on signage. They wanted to make sure that everybody knew that this was their building. So they basically put their emblem on every side of the building so that anywhere you're standing, you would make sure that you knew it was the armies. And we really try to first work with them to make them understand that this is a community and that we're inviting them into our community. But it's clear that they feel like that this is their area and then there's the community around them. So it's really a sad statement it's about, you know, $111 million went into this project with about $50 million towards construction and about the rest of that money sits in an endowment that actually underwrites the cost of this building. Now, without membership fees and without revenue coming in, the Army unfortunately continues to eat away at that endowment quicker and quicker. Where the endowment was supposed to be set up where it could actually last for 150 years. Unfortunately, the way that they're designed their business plan, it's actually not even going to go into 50 years. They had a goal of about 3,000 members. I think right now they're about halfway, and I think they're uh, two, two years old. So, and we've given them all types of suggestions. One is the tiered pricing you know, make folks around, you know, closest to here, to make it so that it's accessible. And they've said no. What they've done is they've done a huge marketing campaign to actually get 80% of their memberships outside of the city of Boston. And they, they, they've had, you know, excuse my French, the balls to say that to us publicly and say that that was a part of their business plan was 80% of their revenue would actually come outside of our community. So it's something that a lot of residents fear because they also designed a massive parking lot that folks would literally come here in the morning, work out, park their car, jump on the commuter rail and go downtown. Mm. And that our community would just be a parking lot. Mm. So, and those are some of the fears that are actually starting, where we're actually starting to see some of it. So, I hate to start off with a negative. But we're going to go through a bunch of other positives. So we're going to go down and actually see some of the housing developments that, that we've done. 